We had a little technical difficulty during the filming of this one, i.e. I forgot to turn the camera on while I was measuring the get the clearances from one side of the chassis to the other and make sure the engine was square. So there's two bolts that you see sticking out in the picture there. That I used to make sure I got on center and measured to the inside of the chassis rail, and it worked out four and a half inches per side. Now you'll also notice the level sitting across the top of the valve covers, and down on the balancer there's a dial protractor sitting there. We did that to make sure the engine was level left, right, and fore and aft so as not to add any pressure to the mid plate or to the transmission. The ratchet strap you see going under the balancer is there just for safety. There's some wood under the engine actually holding up the weight of the motor. The strap's just there, just snug, just to keep a little extra something there in case something happened. So after we got our dimensions, I made this template just so we could double check fit between the frame rails. It's not a good use for your razor scraper cutting out cardboard patterns because it's always good to measure twice cut once especially when dealing with aluminum so we're going to make a template after we've measured which we've already done and make triple shore before we cut it so once i knew the template had fit went ahead and laid things out on the aluminum as you can see here and the little square with the x in it's where we're going to drill the holes for the roll bar tube in the set Okay, so here's part two. I've got it taped up and marked. The reason it's taped is so I don't scratch up the good side. This side won't get hurt that bad. And I'm gonna try the new jigsaw out that I reviewed a while back with a metal cutting blade. See how it does on this quarter inch aluminum. It's 6061 structural aluminum. So here we go. cuts pretty good so now I got to move the plate around and do some more and we'll cut some curves in and do a few other things but I'm happy with that we'll check the finish when we get through cutting the piece off So it cuts pretty good. Blade walks a little more than I would like it to, but not horribly. And we can just take the grinder and dress up the corners. So I'll go ahead and chop the other end off and then this thing's ready to go mount it. why aluminum comes with that coating on it that wrapper so that when you're cutting it you don't mess it up but when you buy these plate kits they usually don't come wrapped so I can say that that Bosch blade gets a little flexy if you put the saw into seesaw mode where it rocks the blade back and forth so I'm gonna have to do a little cleaning up right here on this edge but other than that and that was after the blade got warm other than that it came out pretty good I gotta round this up so I'll get the grinder out and we'll clean this up and he can probably get it on the car tomorrow but there it is all cut out just waiting for a little cleaning it's amazing what you can do with a jigsaw and a little bit of patience and then you got two nice pieces of three plate left to make some other various things you might need to make out of so it's not a total waste just uh, another thing you could do with your jigsaw and a little bit of patience measuring and using a square and a level finder and an angle finder you can get great results so i'll take some more pictures when i get back down here and we 
test fit it up against the car. Okay, so you always want to mark your work. Marked front, two places, so you know that goes towards the front. I still got to clean it up, and I'll find out from the customer if he wants to polish it up or leave it like it is. But these little scratches is what happens to them when they don't have a cheating on them. That's why I had the tape on it to protect it from that. So I took the grinder and the flap wheel and cleaned up the edges. And now I got to take a little file because you always want to make sure that it's not going to hurt anybody and it's as good a product as you can. So you go back everywhere you cut and it don't take a lot. And you just take the little sharp edge off. That's all you got to do. A little bit of brake clean will take the marker off. I would normally use a scribe, but I didn't have one with me today. Run your finger back around, check for any sharp places on the front and the back. Not hitting any. Okay, so there we go. I'll just clean off the marker, wipe it up, and it's ready to go. Let's go see how it fits the car. So you can see in the picture here, there's a little extra meat left there on the insides of the rail mounts. That's so I can trim off to fit anything I might need to move. And as it turned out, when we set it in the car for the initial fit, I did have to take a little bit off the right side of the picture here. So there it is, mostly installed, temporarily. And for all those that are wondering how these attach, you get this little saddle rig that goes on top of here. And I don't have a piece set up to lift the engine up right now. But this will slide back under the engine and the bolt goes in there. And these little T-straps, oops, these little T-straps hold this to the frame, like so, and you just tighten them up. And what that does is it lets you slide the motor around so you can put big block, small block, Ford, Chevy, whatever you want to do in the rail you just change the transmission accordingly and get the right motor plate so there it is another job done thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it as always practice your skills learn a new one either way turn it into craftsmanship you never know how far it'll take you until next time it's been fab race mod repeat have a great day